Hi everyone. I'm going to do my assignment. My assignment was to tell you about crystal balls. And um, I have two crystal balls that I inherit. Uh, no, one of them I inherited from my uncle who gave me all the cool stuff when he passed away. And the other one I bought off Facebook Marketplace for like 20 bucks. So one of the first things that um, I found really interesting when I was... Um, researching everything is that <clears throat> you want to have a quartz crystal ball with the inclusions um, that's the preferred thing to have they're very expensive though like a little one about like this big is probably a hundred and ten dollars so but when they when the when people first did the, the crystal balls they created the crystal balls it was out of barrel barrel crystal so uh, an example of barrel is aquamarine or morganite or emerald so they were quite expensive and now oh my lord they're so expensive they're like ten thousand dollars and shit so it's like whatever but uh that's what they first used. I mean, they used it thousands of years ago. They gazed into crystal balls, like in the biblical times, to foresee the future for the kings and things like that. The Egyptians were, did a lot of scrying and gazing. And so, uh, you, you'll you see a lot of... One of my crystal balls... Let me show you. Let me see if I can't turn this thing. Uh, hold on. That is my crystal ball that I bought. Not the you know, not the four horses, but the crystal ball that I bought from um, Marketplace. That is just glass. It's it's big, but it's just glass. Okay, so then this one. I don't know why I've got the light on. This one I found out is actually crystal. It's got some imperfections in it. It's got some wavy things in it, but there's no bubbles. So you look for bubbles for glass and pure clear, you know, see-through most likely is glass. But this one, when you hold it up to the light, if you want to see if it's crystal or like, I feel like this is probably a mix of a, um, what do you call it, Austrian crystal, you know, like drinking ware and stuff like that, mixed with maybe glass. I don't, I'm not sure. It may not be mixed with glass. It may just be the Austrian crystal. But it's, uh, if you hold it up to the light source, it will create a rainbow if it's got crystal in it. So that's pretty cool. When you look through this one, it's got like weird, weird wavy things inside of it like imperfections there's no inclusions in it but it does um it does create um rainbows so let me see here oh shoot hold on okay sorry about that i don't know what's my going on with my phone anyway i'm gonna read off some of the notes that i made i've, I've read several books about crystal balls um i've always been interested in it years ago i had one like this I mean, we're talking the 90s. And um, I got to a point, I was working really hard on my psychic information and psychic development and things like that. And I got to a point, it was about the time when I was um, doing telekinetic uh, exercises. <clears throat> I was able to, and astral projecting a lot during that time, just started to pick up. And I used to scry in that little crystal ball. Now, I'm sure it was just glass. And you can scry in glass. I mean, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. But uh, I used to scry into it. And so I would see visions. But they come up as clouds at first. It's sort of like... I'll tell you about it a little later. But it, it came up really weird. But you really want... If you're going to do a crystal ball gazing you want and it can be from any crystal it can be rose quartz it can be um fluorite it can be whatever you know um what you want to do is you needed one that's about two inches at the least um which i think is 
50 millimeters is just shy of two inches. So that's what you kind of want to look for. Um, my big one is a little bit hard to handle because it's kind of heavy. But what you really want to do when you first get it, you're going to want to bond with your ball. Bond with your ball. Um, you want to cleanse it. And they suggest warm water and soap. I'd say Florida water is the key because it cleans everything off. It smudges everything. It cleanses it energetically. Um, that's the best one. Florida water, period. And so you want to cleanse your ball. And then when you first get it, you want to bond with it. Now, people bond with it in different ways. But they say that you want to rub your you want to rub your right hand over it. Let me see where it says. You want to, yeah, handle the ball gently, okay, and lovingly. Then you want to run, you gently run your right hand over to imbue it with power and energy. And then you want to do the same thing with your left hand to instill greater insight and sensitivity um, of the ball, and you think of the ball as an extension of your magic, it's a lot like a wand is an extension of your magic, you know, um, there's different ways to bond with it, some people sleep with their crystal ball, uh, you can meditate with your crystal ball, um, you can invite its presence, uh, during magical workings, and you, you build a relationship with your crystal ball, which I thought that was really interesting, because, um, it's easier to handle a two-inch ball than it is this big, you know, six-inch ball over here. But um, you you want to hold it in your hand, meditate with it, and, and in, kind of share your energy with it. Now, <clears throat> when you're scrying, you want to have a dark, completely dark room, somewhere quiet, which, you know, how that goes. With kids and pets, sometimes that's hard to find. <laughs> but, um... You want a quiet place, you want a completely dark room, and you want to light a candle or some kind of dim light source behind you. You don't want it next to the, you don't want the flame flickering and reflecting in the ball or anything like that. You just want a light source so you can see your visions come through the ball. It's just some, some sort of light source, but you don't want it reflecting in the ball, okay? And then, in order to scry, you want to quiet your mind. Okay, you're going to get into a state. you got to qu quiet all the chatter that goes on in your head, which is really hard for me. I have trouble getting rid of the chatter. Um, you want to take deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, and you want to get slower and slower. Okay, and then what they suggest is to imagine, in one of my books, it suggests imagine a golden light descending upon you entering the top of your head, so through the crown chakra, and then filling your entire body, and then encompassing you in a golden bubble of love and protection. Um, then you want to place both hands on the ball for a few minutes, focus on your connection to the ball. Imagine the golden light encompassing you both and filling you with love and bathing you in gentle golden light. Now gaze into the ball from your third eye. So you want to have your third eye looking through the ball. Now I know this is weird, but you know how you can look straight, but I can still see stuff in my peripheral? That's kind of like how it is. You, you want to look from here at the ball, and your eyes are sort of like the peripheral vision. You're going to relax your eyes. Things are going to get blurry. You want to, like, relax your sight so that it's a little bit blurry. And don't forget to blink. You don't want to just stare. Um, but you want to be, while you're breathing, you want to do this. And you want to look from your third eye. And then you want to just, you know, kind of glaze over your eyes as a peripheral vision for your third eye. Okay? And then, um... You may see a mist form. A lot of people explain that they see a mist or clouds forming first thing. And you want to take note of that. Did they make any, did the clouds or mists form into anything? Um, 
any shapes and also uh, it's helpful to write it down but like if you're in the middle of seeing several things you could record it on your phone like audio or on a audio um, recorder and get your information as it's happening sometimes that's easier but um, the interpretation should be your own okay so like let's say you see a tower and let's say you see red clouds. Well, you got to kind of understand what that means to you. What does red represent really mostly for you? What does a tower mean to you personally? Don't lose that in the books that say, like, some people will use dream interpretation books or tea leaf interpretation books because they have all the symbols and the meanings. Don't get hung up on that. Um, because a tower to me is going to be way different than a tower to you. Uh, as far as like where we come from, our background, our association with it, on and on. That vision is for you, okay? When it comes to the ball, the vision is for you. So you must interpret it as, as you see it only. Especially if, if you're reading for someone else. You have to tell them. It's, it's good. If you're reading for someone else, have them write it down as it's happening. Then you can go back, look at it, and interpret it as it's going on, as a as a complete, concise, you know, functioning reading, okay? Um, because your subconscious is specific to you. Symbols will occur and relate to you only. Symbolism, according to you, it's a reflection of your psychic vision. That's what the ball is. So, um... <clears throat> okay i had a brain fart um <clears throat> one thing that uh that i find is easier is sometimes you can have a holder but it needs to be for the ball but it needs to be kind of high or at a level where you're looking straight not where you're looking down on it Okay, so um, you can also just use your hands. You can just hold the ball in your hands, and you can you can look at it through your when you're holding your hands. My big ball over here is a little bit hard to hold in my hand, so I use a container, you know, a holder for it. But uh, they have some interpretations in some of these books, like if you see a red mist, if you see a blue mist. But um, I really think that you should take that into consideration with the, the, color, the color correspondences that we've used. Um, there's a couple of tips, too. Mugwort is fantastic. If you want to rub more mugwort on your um, ball, you can do mugwort tea and, and rub your ball with it. Or you can take dried mugwort and rub your ball with it. And then uh, it will induce visions much more clearly. If you drink mugwort tea while you scry or before you scry, it will also induce visions. So that's a great herb to have around. You can have it smoking. You know, you have a smudge stick going of mugwort. I find that to be very helpful when I'm doing tarot cards and um, different fortune telling stuff. So... That will help you if you use mugwort. I mean, that's helped me a lot. Incense, burning incense while you're uh, scrying near it, like cone incense probably, um, really helps bring the visions forth too. Because you kind of get that haze over the ball and it and it, it's moving. So then it kind of helps bring them to the surface. So there's another tip. Um... Take note of the moon phases if you're going to scry. Uh, moon phases and the days of the week because they, they can affect your psychic visions and your psychic energy. So we've went over that. So you might want to look at um, the phases of the moon and the, um, the days of the week um, for the optimum time to do some psychic work and look at the ball and what you're looking for in particular. Um, there's different, like I say, there's different balls that you can use, like, uh, every time I say ball, I feel like I'm being, um, vulgar. <laughs> I don't know why, it's like, well, <laughs> uh, 
wash your balls and oh it's terrible <laughs> like I'm, being so awful. I'm so awful I'm sorry <laughs> anyway um they even use and I, I posted this that they use crystal ball placement in feng shui like they said rose quartz was really good to put in child's room so there's that too um with crystal balls crystal balls are pretty fascinating they've been doing uh, scrying and fortune telling with them for many many years but it takes time that's the thing it takes a lot of time and it takes like kind of building that relationship with your ball so that's the main thing that you need to remember is that you're building a relationship with your ball. It's an extension of your magic. Um, and that will help you um, better than anything get the visions through. I mean, people look through, uh, what are they called, scrying mirrors. You know, you can make a scrying mirror, you know, where you paint the back of a picture. I've done it with a picture frame. And you paint the back of the black, uh, black paint Nah. paint the back of the glass black woo <laughs> and um and scry that way in the mirrors you can scry in a regular mirror if you set it right if you set it in the right spot with the light um so scrying is uh is a very interesting thing because it, it does take a little time you really kind of have to get in the zone and we know about the zone we we've, we've studied about that so you kind of want to get in your zone and um it is a trance like state but like somebody was saying don't get addicted to the trance um because sometimes trance like states can um linger or something like that i'm not sure what they were trying to say but um you want to be able to ground yourself after you do any kind of work with the crystal ball you know you want to drink water you want to hold grounding stones that kind of thing um take a bath take a shower whatever well however you ground yourself you want to do that after you do your crystal ball um like after you gaze into your crystal ball and you use it even when you use it a lot you still want to ground yourself because it's a high octave energy it's a really high um frequency with that within that ball especially if you get this the different stones and their and their uh, uh, representations and their meanings. You want to really ground yourself and um, get back to earth on that because you do go into this. You know, you're using your third eye, you're using your shock, crown chakra, third eye chakra, and your um, and you're using your solar plexus chakra and you're using your heart chakra so you want to make sure you bring in those bottom chakras the sacral chakra and the uh um the root chakra to, to make sure that those don't get imbalanced because you know you definitely want to ground but they also say that when you're seeing these things you will get a tingling in your gut which is your solar plexus you know when you get a gut feeling when you see certain things come through you'll get a gut feeling that it means what it means and how it's to be interpreted so just keep that in mind but i think that's all i've got um that's all I have on crystal balls, but I hope you guys try it. I hope that you try and, um, I'm going to try it. Uh, they do say that you should keep them immaculately clean. Uh, you can put us, whoa, mine just fell on me. I don't know what's going on. This little bastard's alive. <laughs> anyway, you want to, um, cover it with like a silk, a dark silk scarf the one that you're using for scrying. Now, my glass one over there, it's just for show, you know. But now that I know this other one, which has actually come from my uncle, he loved crystal. And um, it's interesting that this one shoots rainbows. So I'm really excited about that. And it's it's like on the move. It's got energy big time. So I'm going to try and bond with mine. And, and I'll keep you guys updated to my adventures bonding with my ball. <laughs> anyway, love you guys. I hope this helps. Bye.